Opening of the fight, Steve McQuarrie and Jeff Fennick. Bit of a jive from McCrory, who was in his dressing room a while ago with the jukebox turned up exceptionally loud. I think it's a bit louder now, Joe. Yes, I think this is a sign of nerves playing up here, Peter. So uh, I would imagine McCrory, you know, is going through a lot of nerves at this stage. This is why he's putting on a bit of an American show. Incidentally, what you're seeing there now is what uh, he did in, in most of his sparring sessions. McGrory had the uh, disco music turned on and went through a lot of this before he started any uh, calisthenics or, or sparring. New style, Joe. A new style, a warm-up. Absolutely. I don't think it'll do his career much good. This is not a this is not a wrestling match, and I believe that dancing is a bit silly. I mean, you know, if he's fighting for a world title, he should respect it. And here, the applause about to come for... Jeff Fennick, the world IBF champion. Steve McCrory, professional career. He's had 12 wins, three knockouts, one draw, and no losses. And there's the cheer for Australia's own Jeff Fennick. The crowd have gone absolutely wild here. Here he comes now, Jeff Fennick. The whole country is obviously behind Jeff Fennick, and it'll be a a wonderful thing when he hits the ring because he faces one of his best challengers up to date, the gold medalist from the Olympic Games. And I'm sure it'll be it. Listen to the crowd. The atmosphere, absolutely electric. Absolutely electric. The little man from Merrickville with a mean look on his face. And if he wins this, he's uh, had to overcome the disability of the uh, hand injury plus the weight problem and uh, possibly just a lack of uh, sparring partners, but, but by golly, he looks fit. He certainly does, and that determination look on his face tells you one thing only. He wants that McCrory out of the way. Exactly. That professional career, 13 Former wins, 11 world, by knockout. A far superior champion. record now to that of his opponent in, in the knockout in the department. It's an impressive record, I must say, and, uh, and the kind of pressure that's put on this young man has been phenomenal. So I, I, we shall uh, obviously see him uh, go to much greater heights. Well, I guess he'll, uh, he'll assume his customary role, Joe, and take the fight up to uh, McGrory, who carries his hands fairly low, as, uh, as, as I've seen him in the spars. He ca carries them around the midsection, but he's got a good fast pair of hands. Yes, he does, and I believe that Jeff Fennick with his combination will catch McCrory, uh, even though he's going to be, I believe no, he's going to run. McCrory, the American camp has been saying that McCrory is going to stand the there and mix win. it with Fennick. I disagree. I've got a feeling he's going to run for his life. And this is where I think Fennick will come on with his combinations and do his work. Also presented, undefeated, Victorian prodigy, soon to be seen in action. Well, it's a great pity that, of course, um, Pearly Sneed, who hails from the Cronk Gymnasium, couldn't... Uh, step in here tonight to uh, meet um, Paul Ferrari in the main attraction. It was very disappointing and drew a lot of derision from the crowd, but uh, maybe he had a reason. I think, uh, I think if I was given a world title opportunity to fight back in my own country, which in his case is America, I would certainly refuse to fight a KGL timer like Ferrari. Because let's, let's face it, I think Ferrari could have uh, pulled a surprise. Southpaw and a Southpaw spoiler too. Could make you look a bit ordinary. Lee, well, boxers gloving up at the moment in preparation for 15 three-minute rounds. Earlier today, at this same venue, the Sydney Entertainment Centre, we saw them at the traditional weigh-in, and Jeff Fennick was first up. It was a fairly quick entry to the scales and exit. We'll find out why in a moment, but the American manager, Emmanuel Stewart, wasn't too happy about the whole scene. I was trying to look behind and see you. I mean, we know ourselves. We're pushing up ourselves. I mean, there's too many people behind. This is the way the way it should be. But no one is behind him where we can see what's going on. All a bit okay, too quick for Emmanuel Stewart. This is the way he wanted it done. Steve McCrory up on the scales, and he weighed in just under the limit weight. 
Jeff Fennick right on the limit of 53.5, eight stone six pounds under the old scale. And this was the reason Jeff's early exit from the platform there, a bit of homemade ravioli. Round by round, I worked him out early, no problems. I've never been down, mate, I'm not gonna let him put me down. My mum's here tonight, if anybody's gonna put me down, I'll be here. Thoughts from Jeff Fennick and Steve McCrory looking mean. He hasn't looked too impressive, and he certainly hasn't been impressive in his regard to Jeff Fennick. Looking at a, a inexperienced and experienced fight in the ring together, for which I'm going to take Jeff Fennick to school and drop him off. Take him to school and drop him off, Joe. They're heavy words, and uh, for, a, for a young man who's only had three knockouts in his career, and we can, I think, dispute even those three knockouts, uh, it's quite, uh, quite a number to lay on the world champion. The body punching. Are we going to see a lot of that, do you think, Jeff? I think from the American, uh, you'll see some good body shots. He seems to concentrate around that area. And, of course, fighters who box under the banner of the Kronk Gymnasium in Detroit are told that the head moves and the body doesn't, so they tell their boys to concentrate on the body. And, Joe, Jeff's been fasting all week. Is that going to make a difference? He's lost somewhere near half a stone. I think, I think it'll definitely affect his stamina because, let's face it, he's only a little chap. And uh, to lose that kind of weight in such a short period of time obviously will affect his stamina. But I still believe he'll have enough to beat this little guy from America who's, uh, who's obviously come here to win. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be a pushover, but uh, Fennick will have the strength still remained in his body that uh, will be able to do the job. And Fennick, of course, sporting a hand injury for some time. Bruised knuckles, calcification there. He seems to have recovered pretty well from that, though. Joe, would you think... Ladies uh, and gentlemen, would you rise? As in football, painkillers, what sort of uh, drug would they use if they had to put something into his knuckles, Fennec's knuckles? Well, what they normally do, Jeff, if it's, if it's a very painful problem, they would inject you with cortisone injection. We'll continue this after the years. Well, the speakers at the entertainment set are having less trouble with the Australian national anthem than the American. We're ready for a, a big 15 rounder. I'm talking about the uh, hands of Fennec. Uh, this being a 15 round world title fight, I suppose that an extra wrapping of bandage will be out to it. No, there is a, a law that the, each World Boxing Council has, and the IBF Council have the same ruling. You can only use a certain amount of um, bandage on your hand, and that's the law. Between, from the red corner, scaling eight stone five pounds, from Detroit, the United States of America, wearing the famed Kronk Gymnasium colors, 
Gold Trunks, Signature Band, Red and Blue Stripe, Victorious in 126 of 141 amateur contests, including the Golden Gloves, the World Flyweight Championship in 1983, climaxed by the gold medal at the 1984 Los Angeles Games. Activating sophisticated fury, challenging from Olympian Heights, Steve McRory. Find the blue corner, scaling eight stone six pounds from Marrickville, Australia. professional in 13 contests, 11 inside the distance, in the third defense of his crown, and next in April of 1985, exacting retribution, unique fisty phenomenon, champion Jeff Bennett. This must be a great moment for both of these guys again because they wanted to meet, it, meet, meet each other in the Olympic Games and obviously it never came off. Yes. So the nerves must be playing up in both of them. Well, I think that uh, it's, uh, the background of it comes from the Olympics and uh, I think it's very aptly named to call it Olympic Revenge, particularly if Fennec can win it and he certainly looks very fit. Both men look very fit and I'm, uh, I'm uh, quite sure that uh, the victorious one we respect, the, we respect his opposition. Looking, looking at the American, he doesn't seem to be as small uh, as against Fennec as I thought he might have been with a disadvantage of height and reach. Most fighters, uh, Jeff, who are black, tend to come up much larger than uh, the white fighters. That's, uh, I suppose that's the colouring of their skin that would make it that way. But I would imagine he does look much smaller than Jeff in the shoulders and in the arms. We've got three judges, uh, one from America, uh, Louis Race, okay, Filipino right, Judge people? Pasquale Ingersan and uh, Johnny Wheeler from Victoria and uh, the referee, former or Australian back. welterweight champion Paul Moore will be a non-scoring official. They're just about set to go. Paul is a very good referee, he's very fair so uh, we should have a good contest here. Out they come for the World Bantamweight IBU Bantamweight Championship and Fennec drops one low and uh, McCrory steps away, has the hands held high, jabs out a left and carries the glove back to his face. Both men probing the, each other. Good left of the body by Fennec. A light tap there from uh, McCrory but he got through Fennec but Fennec came with two slapping punches to the uh, midsection. Fennec goes around the shoulders, left and right swings. I think Jeff is working off some of his aggression in this uh, early round. As you can see, he's very, very tense. He's uh, going to have to settle himself into the fight. Trading some very heavy blows to the body there, Fennec. And they caught the American. He took a lot of them on the midsection. Getting his head in close and jabbing nicely with the left hand. Working up to his men and making uh, McGrory know that he's in with a strong, willing and capable opponent. I think it will take Jeff around uh, a couple of rounds to settle in this fight because he's obviously very tense and uh, he knows that McClure is a good fighter who won the Olympic gold medal was no no mean feat so uh, well he's putting on points with this attacking stance that he's taking going up with those wild shots over the shoulder and McGorry hasn't found the answer in the early seconds of this fight Phoenix still driving forward with a look of defiance in his eyes 
Now he's trying to work to the body. The American still with the hands held very high, as he didn't in sparring. He kept them fairly low in the gymnasium spar. I'm very surprised, Jeff, because I'm totally being proven wrong here that uh, McCrory is actually standing in front of Fennec and uh, protecting himself and taking all those punches on the gloves. I would have thought he'd have run. Just shows you how wrong he can be. And there's McCrory trying to uh, work his right hand in on that occasion. Fennec's left hand scored to the mouth. Oh, and he's trying to get around the side of uh, McCrory's left hand which is tucked up to the face. McGrory keeping those gloves packed in very tight to his face. Chopping right hand there from Fennec. McGrory tries to get inside uh, the Australian. Fennec is dishing it out at the moment. Trying to drop one low there, Fennec, as he backed away from his man and might have mistimed the shot. Fennec working the perimeter of the ring and in comes the American with a right hand and a left to the face and tries to follow up, but Fennec went up with the gloves and uh, has tight defense. Oh, there's a good right hand from McGrory. Might have just scrambled away as Fennec seemed to roll underneath it. And he tries again for the body. The American weaving in close, doing a lot of head weaving. That time both boys scored with simultaneous left-handers. Now McGrory working Fennec into a corner and ripping away to the body, but Fennec comes off the ropes with good counterpunches. It's lovely to see McCrory obviously showing his vast experience as an amateur, protecting himself and, not, and being able to take all those punches on the gloves and the arms. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a case of a, a true champion who has gone great hearts in his amateur career. Admittedly, it's only the first round, but uh, he's shown himself to be a, a very good challenger. Yes, he surprised me there, uh, McCrory. And in fact, I think there's a chance that, uh, although Fennec was attacking solidly there, as you say, he had the elbows in the right position, uh, McGrory, but he didn't show this uh, snap, McGrory, and uh, the attacking stance that he had in the gymnasium. He let the fellows lead to him and he was working counters out all the time. McGrory's very cool and very, uh, very calm in that corner. He obviously knows he's in there with a very, very uh, determined champion. So uh, I know he knows his work is cut out for him. Well, McGrory looks uh, undisturbed and uh, Fennec rearing to go. Round two. McCrory stepping up to his man. Fennec comes in with his hands around uh, the American's fist, which are tucked in close to the chest. McCrory trying to balk Fennec into a lead. Fennec jabs the left and then goes around his opponent, slapping with the right watch hand. Here he is. Watch your head. Caution there from Paul Moore. I think it might have been against Fennec for telling him to watch his hands. It looked like McCrory was actually talking to Fennec then. He says, watch, watch your head, watch your head. I'm afraid when you're fighting for a world title, things like this do happen, and it's uh, unfortunate, but he's in there to fight. He's not in there to complain. Fennec working hard, but he's backing away from the American. Jabs out a left hand. Brooke McCrory trying to pin uh, Fennec down, but Fennec keeps ruffling him up as he storms in with those little short punches. Left going away by Fennec. They lock horns in mid ring there, and the American misses. It goes underneath the uh, Fennec. Get your arms the champion right hand. It seems to me that uh, Jeff is trying to get his reign still. I'm just hoping that he doesn't put too much effort into these early stages of the fight. Yeah, when you consider that he, uh, he had a, has a weight problem, and that last week was mainly to get weight off, he may be expending too much energy, energy in these early sessions, possibly. He's certainly throwing some very good body shots, and McCrory's cringing every time he throws it. That was a very good right upper cut by Fennec. Hit McCrory right a flush in the face. And he worked his hand right hand to the body. And he goes in. McCrory's very tight. He's, I think, proving to be a better campaigner in the ring, McCrory, than uh, Jerome Coffey. Would you agree with me there? Absolutely. Uh, Jerome Coffey ran for the whole 15 rounds. This man has. Uh, Proven what he said he was going to do, stand in front of Fennec and mix it with him. Jeff has to just uh, settle himself into this fight and not waste too much energy on his gloves, uh, on the uh, McCrory's gloves and the elbows. Well, McCrory is uh, letting some body rips go and then going back into a defensive shell and uh, these tactics. So Fennec throws and he misses with the expensive. And McCrory back on the ropes and Fennec trying to bombard him to get an opening. Tries left and right. Short punches from Fennec. 
some of them missing, some of them landing. I think both these young men are trying to prove something to the world, and uh, it's amazing when you're an Olympic, an Olympic gold medalist and you're fighting a guy who thought he should have been the gold, the gold medalist in the Olympic Games. There's a bit of a grudge fight here, and uh, it certainly shows it. Good body shots from Fennick. He's working away to the body and finding some open spaces there on the Americans' midsection. In goes the left hand again from Fennick, and over the top of the right, and there's the bell. Well, obviously, both rounds have gone to Jeff Fennick, and the fight is very, very tense still at this moment. Both men look very calm and relaxed in the corner. Yes, I think uh, there's no sign of it going uh, out on an early note. It looks to me as though they've both got enough energy to go on for quite a while. Absolutely. In the replay, as you can see, Jeff is very tense because you can see every muscle in his back rippling. He's, he's trying a little bit too hard, I think. Um, I think he should settle down a little bit and, and throw those shots more relaxed. He's just too tense. That head work from the American is making Fennick blows um, get off target a lot in that little action shot we had there. Yes, well, this is a typical uh, Kronk, uh, Kronk Jim uh, uh, style of boxing. You know, you just move the head to the side and bob away from those big punches. But uh, again, I think the, the pressure that Fennick will put on him will prove at the end. Out they move around three and again Fennick attacks the uh, body, tries to take the punches up but the American with a big broad grin was able to uh, stymie his opponent's effort for a moment or so to break into the clear. Fennick jabbing out again or tries left to the body and right to the side of the head. Fennick working both hands again. A lot of infighting going on here Joe. I think Jeff is going to prove to McCrory that he is a world champion. He's not here to fight for a gold medal. He's here to defend his world title, which is far more, it's valued at far more than the gold medal. And uh, it's not a three-round fight. This is a 15-round, and it has to go 15. Fennec will be there. And McCrory hasn't been the full 15 yet, uh, so it could get very interesting in the latter part. Yes, he's only been 10 rounds, and uh, it's, it's a big uh, transition to go at this pace for another five rounds, particularly at three minutes. Fennick still taking the fight up, catching the judge's eyes. Good left by the American, but Fennick's right was a stinging punch. Getting his hands over the top of uh, McGrory. McGrory looks as though he's in pain, actually. He's, uh, he's grimacing every time Fennick hits him in the body. It's amazing what a couple of good body shots does. Your hands tend to feel like lead. And that's what they want to do to bring them down so that the Fennec seems to be favoring his right hand to he's working well to the body I think this is the first round we've seen McGrory show a little fatigue well the, the, the punches he's been taking from Fennec has been quite phenomenal I cannot understand that the reason why he's standing there in such an early part of the fight and taking those big shots well, he did a lot of this in the gymnasium. He, he seemed to uh, take flush, punches flush to uh, round the head area. And uh, he was trying to harden his midsection up, I don't know, but he took a lot of shots that he shouldn't have taken in the gymnasium. But he seems to be a better boxer on the night than he was in the gym. He certainly does. And uh, a lot of people thought that this fight wasn't going to go anywhere, but I believe that this McCrory is a dash good uh, challenger for the world title. Oh, by the way, for the people right through the length and breadth of Australia listening to this fight tonight, uh, or, or watching it, uh, Shane Knox scored a very impressive win over Norm Stevens. Down, that was a good down, right. Wasn't it just? Yes, um, um, I was very pleased to see Steve Norman uh, going the distance, and I was also very pleased to see Shane Knox win. There was a telling right hand, in close Phoenix, uppercutting, and trying to finish the American off, trying to get him wobbling, but the American's staying in close for safety's sake. Yes, Jeff has really put the pressure on this man. I, uh, I'm just hoping that he'll be able to sustain this. It is a fierce pace. You're quite right. Very fierce pace. Well, a slower start than normal from Jeff. The Americans scored with a couple of good lefts in the first round and a half. Where have they gone to now, do you think? Well, well, I mean, like I said, Peter, in the early part of the fight, I mean, this McCraw is here to win this title, and... Uh, I just still believe that Jeff... Oh, here's a replay. I mean, it just shows you how he's grimacing every time Fennec lands those good shots. 
but Fennec has not let him off once, and this is a, a, a mark of a true champion, that when he knows he's got his title at stake, he will not let go. What about the centre ring position? It's been uh, dominated by the Americans so far, a, a position Jeff really likes to hold on to. It's not doesn't seem to be making uh, any sort of impression in the last round. Well, they've both been taking the action up to mid-ring and uh, forgetting about the outskirts. Uh, that might happen later uh, when one of them gets a, a little weary. Well, I still believe that McCrory eventually will realise that uh, the punches he's taking from Fennec at this moment will tell on him, so he'll have to get on his bicycle. Yeah, but I'm inclined to go with you there. He's, uh, for a man who had to watch his weight, he certainly has to watch his stamina in the closing part, but he's very strong, Fennec, and that uh, reach advantage and height and also the, the little extra weight that he might have gained after the weigh-in. Well, weigh in a bit in his favour in these early rounds, I would guess. There's the American stabbing the left hand out at long range, but Fennec walks up to him, backs him up to the ropes, and works hard to the body. Oh, good right hand from Fennec. Made the American hang on for a moment. And now Fennec's cutting loose underneath. And good punches. The American got two or three hard knocks to the side of the jaw. McCrory has certainly taken some very big punches from Fennec. Um, I'm surprised that he's, he's still standing there. Jeff, of course, is, uh, hasn't let up once yet. He's just put the pressure on from round one. I don't think those kind of smiles and grimaces from uh, McCrory to the fans is going to help him. He should be concentrating more on his work. Well, he is an actor, Joe. He's, uh, he and his uh, compatriot, uh, Hell, he's need both had uh, experience in acting and he might have to use some of that to nitrocise the... He may just up. have to. I would like to just quickly thank all those lovely people for writing in and thanking me to be on ABC for the great fights that ABC has been putting on. Thank you again, all you lovely fans out there, and uh, ABC will continue giving you the greatest fights on television. This could be uh, Fennec's last fight as a bantamweight. I spoke to him the other day and he said this trying to pull weight off to fight at that division is uh, telling and taxing his uh, strength and we might see him here tonight as a bantamweight for the last time. Well, I think so. I mean, he's only 22 years of age. He's, he's still growing and he's still maturing. Uh, he hasn't got an ounce of fat on him, so uh, he, he must be struggling, as, uh, as, as uh, Johnny Lewis has said, to make the weight. I think he should step up one class and uh, give himself that nice breathing pace where he doesn't have to work so hard to get the weight off. Koenig's starting to pound away there at the American. His arms are sagging a little here. Rory trying to head roll in close there, but steps away from Koenig. Koenig misses left and right. Jeff has a slight trickle of blood coming out of his nose. It could have been a, one of those good left jabs that McCrory does throw. Yes, I can see that trickle now. It's just coming down from both nostrils. Fighting a very cagey fight, the American, keeping him close and making a lot of Koenig's work go astray, but the ones that do land from Koenig are, are by far the, the most telling punches of the two. And there's a fusillator blows from Koenig. The last two or three went astray, but it's keeping him moving. He certainly is a very clever mover, that uh, McCrory, and uh, a lot of those punches that Jeff has thrown were in mid-air, not landing on its target, but the big ones are landing. Very good round. Jeff, you mentioned he was a clever mover, but he's not looking that quick. In, in training during the week, it was a bit slow on his feet. Also, the Olympic gold medal was one. He, he prefers just to stay there and sway around rather than dance around. Well, you see, Peter, as you can see here in the clinches on the replay, uh, although he is, uh, he's not moving so fast, his body and his head is moving fast. Jeff is coming on very strong. But you know the amazing thing is we've been talking about Jeff making the weight. I've got a strange feeling that McCrory could have had trouble making the weight as well because... They, although there is a lot of snappiness still in his punches, there's also, at, at times, there's a lapse of uh, energy that's not coming forward where it should be. So I think they could have, you know, we may have been seeing Jeff too much and not enough of McCrory. McCrory could have had the same problem. Yes, looks quick in the upper body movement, but a bit slow on the feet, perhaps. That's right, and this could be due to the fact that he had to fight for the, to get the weight down as well. Of course, they're both 21, 22. And both are undefeated as professional uh, fighters, and one has to come out of this fight as a loser. At the moment, it looks like McClory, but McClory is still in there with a big chance. He hasn't been visibly hurt, backing away from uh, Fennig after taking quite a lot of short shots around the head and shoulder region and body region. And now Fennig tries to pen him up on the uh, ropes, but McClory too smart is working to the 
midsection or mid part of the ring. Benny coming at him again with those charging left hands. Jeff is one of those type of fighters that would annoy any fighter who he'd be mixing with because he just keeps coming, coming, coming in. Uh, Joe is a typical Joe Frazier style fighter. And uh, I'm sure Jeff won't mind me saying that, but he is just unbearable, I'm sure. And McCrory is beginning to realize this. Good right from McCrory. That's lifted the, uh, the spray from Fennec's head. That was the best right he's thrown, and he tried to repeat it. May have caught Fennec short on the mouth, but Fennec's back to the body once more. McCorry does look very composed, although he's been hit tremendously by Fennec, he's still kept his composure, so uh, it's good to see that he's not, he's not rustled by Fennec's onslaught. He was the uh, world amateur champion before he won the uh, Olympic gold medal, McCorry, so he has a fine reputation as an amateur fighter. But uh, in the free, in the uh, professional ranks, Fennec has the better knockout record, which, if he can keep this pace going, uh, might uh, be curtains for the American in the later rounds. Fennec still hammering away to that midsection. Quite a short right hand. A very good right hand from McCrory. And I think it shook Jeff. But I think we'll see Jeff Fennec hang in there and he'll use his own experience that he's gained through his career. They're into round five, and again, Fennec trying to back the American onto the ropes. Just with left and right, Merrigan used very good uh, head weaves there to get away from those two or three shots. He's starting to fumble around now, with McGrory and Fennec stabbing at him. Showing some signs of the wear he's taken, McGrory, in this round. Well, the fans are certainly loving it, and I'm sure the whole of Australia who will be watching this is enjoying it as much as we are because both very talented young men here both undefeated jeff has been dying to get to mccrory and he's got his chance tonight so both men are going to put on a great show for us and i i believe that fennec will come out on top yeah, he has the energy to keep pouring it on and there, there's uh, fennec dropping one down a little bit low to the body with the left hand bounces back misses the left leg lock uh, each other's gloves and the american saw a chance to whip a right hand in and out there and goes the bell for round Wow. Well, that was a very tough fight. I could have given it um, to both men. I think that would have been a drawn round. Um, I believe that Fennec came on strong. McCrory did catch him with a couple of very good left hooks. So um, the fight is really warming up. They've only had one common opponent in their professional career, a, a bloke called Kenny Butts, as we watch the action from round five. Jeff Fennec beat him in two, stopped him in two, and uh, one on points was the decision for the American Steve McCrory and uh, he doesn't hold much to that particular performance. He, he said he had an injured hand for that one. Which is a very... <laughs> <laughs> well, no comment on that one. But going back to that replay, if you just noticed that, uh, do you see McCrory when he threw that right hand, that looping right hand, that it caught Jeff flush on the face. So Jeff knows now the power in this, ha in this man's hand, so uh, he's got to be careful because uh, he does throw a fairly good right hand. Out for round six. Fennec again taking the fight up to his opponent. McGorry using the ring spaces now for the first time, starting to bounce away to the outskirts of the ropes. Fennec still trying to pen his men up into the corner, using quite a lot of ring space here as McCrory. Fennec with uh, left and right trying to bounce away off the mark. Fennec chasing his man. McGorry tries to mix it with him for a second on the ropes. Oh, away McCrory is not as muscular as Jeff Fennec, but uh, he still has a, uh, a lot of strength in those punches. When you can see, he throws that right hand very loosely, which is a sign of a good, uh, a good fighter. Jeff, of course, is very muscular, and this is why I believe he has to go up in the next division, because he's just wasting away at this weight. Yes. Certainly make a much stronger man as a super bantamweight, or even up to the feathers a bit later, maybe. I think later on in his career, he could work very well make it in the feathers. Now the American goes back after using the outer spaces of the ring, he's inclined to take the fight up for Fennec. Misses with the left hand, tries another jab to the face. Right hand there from the American. Watch your head, come on, watch your head, Jeff. The referee, uh, Moore, is doing a very good job here. He's keep warning Jeff to watch his head. 
which is quite right. I mean, you know, we don't want any silly cuts and bruises on the on the fighters. Merrigan tried the right hand and came back with a good combination of punches there, McCrory. Cut loose in good style. Hart Fennick was stung into action. Back to mid-ring, and they're trading blows from all sorts of directions. Some of them are a bit wild. McCrory hit Fennick with some good punches there, but Jeff came back instantly with a, a flurry of punches which put, which, uh, put McCrory off guard and uh, totally threw him off balance. Copy left and right and followed up with another right hand, and now he's got Fennick backing away. He hit him with a very good left hook. Jeff Fennick was hit with a very left hook, a very good left hook there, and McCrory saw his chance. And he's... And he's uh, well, that's a good round Come from on, Jeff. McCrory. Good round. He's hitting the shots in there. Right hand from McCrory. And now Fennick's looking a little anxious here and is just stalling for a moment. Backpedalling, stepping away. Tries left and right. They were short, short of range. McCrory looked for an opening there but failed to uh, throw the punch in time. Now they're trading right-handers. Fennick missing with a left. This is a good round from McCrory. Certainly, Jeff has took some of McCrory's biggest punches and he's still standing there, so... Uh, this is a sign that he's, he's very fit. I do still believe, uh, Jeff, that, uh, that oh, taking point. that weight down has not done him any good at all. I still I believe that Jeff Bennett has taken down that weight too quickly and his strength, a lot of his strength. I think the American might have shaded him there. What do you think? Well, I mean, as you can see, he's back in his corner. He's not breathing heavily, so it was just two stunning punches that he hit him with. I think you'll see that left hook coming up from McCrory, which caught him flush on the chin. That's a right hand that missed, and I think he comes through with a left hook, McCrory. I think he's just setting himself now. He would come on. Oh, I we thought must that have... maybe if McCrory has won a round up to the, this uh, stage of the fight, I'd, I'd have to lean to him on that particular. That round has to go to McCrory. Yes, with the left hand, Jeff possibly dropping his, uh, his right a fraction, and, and there's a bit of an opening there. I think what happened here, Peter, is that obviously uh, Jeff has burnt a lot of juice up in the first three rounds, and uh, this guy is waiting for him to make a mistake, and, he, and Jeff has made it on two occasions because he's been hit with some big shots. And look how composed he is. He's... Um, he knows the fight's got a long way to go yet. My word, and he's uh, still very bright, clear eyes. Out they come for round seven. Fennick again pounding his man down low on that belt line, trying to pin McGrory against the reps. McGrory with the gloves taken up high to the face. Trying to work away here with a probing left hand, ducking away from being pinned on the ropes and throwing that choppy right once more. I think McCrory is going to do the waiting game where he's going to counter punch Jeff. Every time Jeff makes a move, he'll come back with that right hander because he's noticed that his weak point. Oh, there was a good body punch from Jeff. Very Fennick good body punch. It almost made McCrory buckle. Come on, fight the way out. Come on. It's a bruising fight, not an inch given. Fennick again moving up. Ryan Pin McCrory. McCrory for a good right hand. And he's weaving away from the counter blows of uh, Fennick. McCrory was talking in, the, in that clinch again. And I think he's been hurt. Fighting a very clever fight, the American, to stay in the uh, contest. But Fennick may have used a lot of, too much energy in those earlier sessions, but he's still strong. Back comes the American with a hard right hand to the side of the head. Fennick oh. scored well and they both uh, landed simultaneously in close. It's a bruising, hard fight. This is a very, very close in fighting. Both men have taken tremendous body shots. Oh, that right and hand. threw another good right hand which has caught Jeff on the, on the chin. Timing that right hand to catch uh, Fennick at the right moment. Fennick dropping that left a little low again. Still pounding away to the body. Glory tried the right, came back with the left. Fennick may have had the glove there in time. Glory drops his hands and Fennick dives in with the right and missed. I think both men have thrown such heavy punches that both seem to have tied quite considerably from, uh, from the early rounds. Now it seems to be the American who seems to be showing a little wear in this session. He looks so much clearer in the corner before, but he's 
He's starting to wilt a bit under this uh, this battery that uh, Fanning is throwing up to him, the rough and tumble style, ready to mix it all the way. That's it. Well, the fans can't worry about the action. They're getting plenty for their money. Oh, absolutely, and I'm sure the I'm sure the whole country is very impressed with this fight. I mean, McClure is here as the Olympic gold medalist, and Jeff Fennick, who wanted to fight for it. It's just unreal, because they're both against each other, both undefeated. Fennick has the greater knockout record, but this McClure has really proven himself to be quite a big puncher, because he's hit Fennick with a couple of very stiff right hands. There you are, in the close, in the replays, you can see that again. McClure, uh, we'll just get back to it now in the motion. Here's Jeff throwing some good left-right hooks. A bit of elbow coming up from McCrory, trying to power it off. I think he's feeling it in this round where the uh, his cornermen are working very hard to try and recompose. And here's Jeff looking good. He says, I'll get him. Look at him clenching his teeth. Yes, he's got the strength to do it. At McCrory's first, first up onto his feet, looking for action. Round eight. Round eight. I think again taking the attack up to uh, McGlory who's using the outskirts of the ring using good footwork to stay away we see a bit of McGlory running now and doing a bit of fancy work I think Jeff would love that because he will catch him with some great body shots again as you can see a good left jab to the stomach taking a lot of those Joe a lot of those uh, jabs to the stomach hurtful blows it's amazing how that saps your strength okay come on mate Okay. Get your arm, please. I'm very impressed with McCrory. He's come here and he's done a very good job up till now. He's, uh, he's put up a very good show. Proving himself a much more durable opponent and uh, scientific opponent than uh, Coffey, who, who gave Fennick a very good fight. Now again, it's Fennick rolling those shoulders from side to side, trying to balk his man into a lead, taking the fight up again, looking a little fresher, dropping that left hand fairly low on the American's body, or there's a swinging left hand. Followed up by another left hander from Fennick and left again, and uh, the American dives into a clinch. Now Fennick's pouring on the pressure, and uh, McGrory is backing away to the ropes. In goes Fennick, hard left hand. American might have had the glove to take some of the sting away from it, but it ruffled him up. Back goes the American with a low swung right hander in retaliation, and Fennick's trying to work in close again to the body. I think Jeff has sapped a lot of strength out of McCrory's hand, even when he's thrown that left jab now, that left hand jabs of McCrory seem to drop as soon as he pulls back, as you can see. But Jeff still has to keep very aware of this guy throwing that right hand because he throws it very fast. Come on, down, hole, work it, come on. He uh, will be just a shade, or he might be trying to let Penny uh, spend the energy again in this session. Jeff, Jeff's got him into a got himself in a great composure. His, his, his punches are seem to be flying much easier now, so uh, and I think McCrory has realised that he's uh, dancing more and he's running away from Fennick more. Fennick again trying to work underneath uh, McCrory. McCrory tries the right hand again. Oh, it's taken again there by the right from uh, McCrory. Fennick. Fennick goes under the uh, gloves of uh, McCrory. They're mixing it up in close. A lot of good left hand by Fennick. And left and right again by Fennick. And a right hander. And, in the, and another right by Fennick. Left and right by Fennick. The American backing away. McCrory is hanging on for his life now. He's really uh, took some big shots from Fennick. He threw a very wild left hook there, which missed. Jeff just keeping the pressure on. Good swinging right hand by Fennick. This is a good round for Fennick. He's working away. That's it. And McCrory took plenty of uh, heavy shots in that session. Excellent round for Jeff Fennick. I think McCrory uh, would like to have forgotten about that last round. What do you think, Peter? I think indeed he took some heavy punishment there indeed. Fennick you... really pouring it on. From over there, I thought, though, that... Uh, the American was getting back into it. He was starting to move a bit better around the ring, but he was certainly stood up by a couple of times by Fennick there. I think the flurry of punches that Fennick threw at McCrory sort of flustered him and he lost his momentum. Uh, but of course, Fennick does that to all his opponents up till now, so uh, it's nothing surprising to us. But this young man, I'm sure, has never met anybody so aggressive, so determined as Fennick. Not even in the Olympics, as I keep emphasising. There's Paul my old mate. Crocodile Dundee Hogan. Yes, yeah. he's very keen on the action and... Uh, 
John Cornell next. Concentrating, turn, yes. Concentrating heavily on the uh, on the fight. Uh, by the way, that little trickle of blood, they've done a good job of stopped that little trickle from uh, Phoenix Nose. Now they move out for round nine, and uh, the American McCrory looking, oh, there's a good right-hander, and uh, McCrory looking for a chance to find an opening on Phoenix Chin with a right glove. Slaps out a left, then he goes to the body with a stinging left rip. In tries the punch, McCrory retaliates, they slap away, Fennec missed with the right. Now, McCrory keeping the gloves fairly high. Both men land simultaneous jabs. McCrory does have very good defence, I must say. Although he's been hit with some very good punches, a lot of those punches of Fennec have gone on his arms and his gloves. So, um, he's learned his profession very well. And someone so aggressive as Fennec who throws punches in, in, a, in, a, in dozens and, and half dozens, it's quite remarkable that he's been able to guard himself so well. Now yeah, McGrory landed that, that was the third right-hander he's landed on Fennec. And uh, they had a bit of sting in them. Fennec's back into a clinch. Left swing from McGrory. And mixing it very tight inside. And still Fennec is concentrating, working on that body. Both men supremely fit. Fennec letting go with an avalanche of blows here, causing the American to give ground. Good combination of punches by Jack Fennec. McCrory is trying to hold on any, any way he can at this, in this round. Break! Step back. Come on, step back. Don't hold. Then he throws them in clusters, doesn't he? Joey he seems to throw them three or four or five at the time, and one might miss, but the others will be on the target. The only other fighter that I've seen throw clusters of punches like this was the other great fighter called Bobby Chacon, who was one of uh, one of the greatest champions I've seen. And Jeff is certainly proven that he can throw as many. Slugging away in very close quarters. Both men watching their defences very tightly indeed. A lot of short infighting here. Berrigan rolling his head on the Phoenix shoulders, trying to get set for the right again. I'm sure, of the, I'm sure of a lot of those little towns way out in the sticks in the countries are enjoying this fight because this is one of the finest fights I've seen on television for a very long time. And I just want to quickly say hello to my mum, Mrs. L. Stop in Chinchilla, Queensland, way out in the bush, one of the loveliest places in the country, Chinchilla. Heard a lot about it. Now, Fennec again has uh, McCrory pinned on the ropes and is scoring short punches around the uh, mouth and neck region. Oh, a couple of choppy rights from Fennec, good punches. Eric didn't have an answer for them there on for that occasion. And now McGurry is yielding ground again. That's it. Well, gentlemen, round nine. How are you scoring it so far? Well, well I would have... I'm sorry, Jeff, what do you, what do you think? I, I got Fennec a good leader. Oh, absolutely. I believe that uh, McCrory's have got possibly two rounds and the rest is all Jeff's. I mean, uh, the, the sheer pressure that he's put on this guy uh, in points-wise, there's no way he's uh, behind. We're coming up to round 10 and, of course, this is where... Uh, the pressure will go as on the American because see, he hasn't gone, yes. As in his close quarters, I mean, just see the amount of punches he's hit him. He's hit him again with about eight or nine punches. With a shoulder turn and heaps of power behind them. Look at Fennec's face, he, he's so determined, you know. He says, you're not taking my title. I'm sticking and holding on to it. Yes, with the power of Fennec's punches and the consistency of them, he has to be a very good leader up to this point of the fight. And now the pressure, as I said, goes on to McGurry. Coming into the uh, last five rounds, the last six rounds. Well, this is still territory that McCrory knows about. He's, he's been ten rounds a few times. Um, but after this round, if it goes uh, beyond ten, uh, it'll be new territory for him. So it'll be very interesting to see how his, uh, his, menta his mental uh, conditioning will hold up to it. He's going to use the outskirts of the ring, the perimeter, to get away now. And, it, and there's uh, Fennec trying to uh, keep him Punch away up. in range and uh, work that right hand to the head. Fennec dancing from toe to toe, squaring and flexing the shoulders. Left hand by Fennec Gregory chops in with that right again. And he tried a left, but the American's glove was there to steer it clear of the mark. Well, the American used good uh, evasive tactics there, got away. 
referee. Get your arms loose. Come on. Referee telling them to keep their arms clear. Rory missed with the right over Pinnock's shoulder. I think this is where you'll see a, a, a turn of the tides. Where Jack will come on very strong in the last five rounds. Where, whereas McCrory, who's never been beyond ten, will start um, collecting the bigger shots on his chin. A nice left and right from Pinnock. They were very hurtful punches and McCrory is not looking too well. McCrory backing. Seeking refuge in a clinch, trying to keep up as close as he can. Push Finnick away there with a the left glove. And tried a loopy right hand. Missing with a very wide swing there, McGrory. But Jeff is now picking McCrory to pieces with some of those big body shots and right handers. I mean, there's no question about it. Jeff Finnick is one of the uh, best bantam weights in the world. On, in fact, he is the best bantam on. weight in the world. But uh, I don't believe anybody could uh, stand up to his pressure. Well, he's currently rated by the Ring magazine, which is the Bible. All right, watch your head. Uh, Whoa, hold on a second. Of hold all on a the uh, ratings, Period, I think. Right? You and you, watch your head. Referee's doing a very good job because both men were using their heads a little bit there. They're telling them both that they had to watch their head. Well, it's, it's a close in fight, and I suppose there's got to be contact made frequently with the heads. Absolutely. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Fennec is rated number five in the world by Ring Magazine. That's a very big trivia to him. Yes, it is. Uh, but then again, Jeff has proven himself uh, on three occasions that he's going to stay in uh, their work in the world. I believe that he could beat the uh, WBC and the WBA champions. On tonight's effort, if he could remain a band, I mean, he'd certainly wear them out. He'd, I can't imagine uh, some of these top rated fighters in that division withstanding this, but whether he fights band again remains to be seen. Well, now Fennick pouring the pressure on, caught McGrory, swings a hard right, but McGrory dived into a clinch, let the punch slide over his shoulder, but Fennick's trying to get those hands high again. And McGrory keeping his gloves as close as the face uh, as he can get them. There's the bell for the end of round 10. Well, that was definitely again Jeff Fennick's round. McGrory looks, looks for the wear, you know, he looks at those breathing and panting. Um, I think his manager in the corner there is trying to work out. Oh, here's Jeff, of course, looking. So oh, I've got him now, saying to himself. Johnny Lewis, his great trainer, is obviously telling him, just keep that up, Jeff. You're doing very well. There's no chance of you losing. But just keep your hands high so you don't get caught with those big right-handers. McCrory, of course, we don't know what he's going to do with himself. He's, uh, he said, what do I have to do to stop this man? Well, he's got to make his run from here, but... Uh whether he's fit enough to do that remains Here's to be Here's a close quarters, Jeff. Just look at how Jeff just determined, grits his teeth. McCrory looks as though he's determined as well, but misses with a wide left. Jeff and, comes back uh, with one, two. One, two to the head, and uh, they were good scoring blows. Well, we're waiting for this uh, 11th Second. session. Uh, Round 11. They move out now with Benny getting ready to uh, attack once more. I don't think we'll see any dancing out of McCrory uh, as of now, um, Jeff. I think his dancing has uh, been... I think Fennec's got enough lead in this fight to, uh, to, to taper off the, the pace a bit himself. After all, he did go very fiercely in those first five rounds. Good left to the face by Fennec. American dropping that left hand down near the thigh region. The only thing is, Jeff, that run up to the last round, should it go that far, both men have to be alert and uh, aware of them of themselves because both men can punch quite hard and they could get hurt. Corey watching very closely. Taken in the midsection, left hand. Now the crowd are cheering Finnick on, trying urging Finnick to bring the finisher over, but the American still is elusive and cagey. Claims the Australian in the clinch. Finnick working the left glove up onto the body and then trying to ruffle his man up on the ropes. And McGrory doesn't seem to have a great answer to this. He just doesn't know how, what to do with all that pressure that Fennec is putting on him. I would have thought he'd have run and danced a little bit and, and tried to uh, sustain some of his strength, but he's, he's just mixing it. I can't believe it. Traded, traded punches there. Both landed. There's a good rip there by uh, Fennec. That punch really hurt. Taking it high on the shoulders and then trying to work it back to the body. McGrory goes over the top, steps away. Both trading punches into a clinch once more. Both men let right-handers go, though it's going to be a little astray. And he spears to the body. Caught his man with a short right to the head. 
and drop the left hand down. McGrory fires a right. Fenix left and right hands are persistent and fast, and they're getting inside McGrory. Fenix still working away, pouring the pressure on. McGrory is just hanging on now for his for bare life because he, I think he realizes that unless he pulls out something spectacular, Fenix will be there and they'll, they'll pressure him and pressure him right up to the final right. moment. McCrory's hurt. Been taken here. He's been hurt. McCrory's hurt. Yes, McCrory's hurt. He doesn't yes. know where, what to do with it himself. He's taking some heavy shots around the body. Fenwick measured him there. Right uppercut. Oh, good punch. Beautiful punch by Fenwick. And really hurt McCrory. Other right-hander. Left, right by Fenwick. Left, right. And the American staggers away. Fenwick goes to the body. McCrory's hurt. The whole stadium has come alive with excitement. There's 12 seconds, 11 seconds to go down to the countdown for this round. Both men have thrown big punches. Fennick has come on very strong. McCrory doesn't know where he's standing. I think he'll, he'll ride out this round. That's it. And that's the end of the bell. What a great round for Jeff Fennick. I hope you're listening, Billy Carter. This is one of the greatest fights you'll ever see in Circus Paradise. Well, there's the McCrory. He really took a pounding in that round, and... Uh... Uh, the seconds working overtime on McCrory. Look at this incredible pressure Jeff Fennick has put in on McCrory's. He just doesn't know where he's standing. He's looking at Fennick with glazed eyes. He's just enough strength to lift his hands up to block some of those shots up. What do you think, Peter? Absolutely tremendous. Jeff, you used to be an old stadium fan. Does it bring back a few memories for you watching sure. this at close quarters? Sure it does. This is one of the best bantamweight fights I've seen. I've seen Carruthers fight and Lionel Rose and... Uh, I don't know that they were any more exciting or colourful than what we're watching here tonight, uh, Peter. But looking at that particular round, the way McCrory reeled a couple of times, there is a chance that he uh, he may not see the journey out. Well, this is it. I mean, Jeff Fennick has thrown so many good body shots at him that I'm sure it's sapped a lot of his strength. And in fact, I cannot understand why he's just standing there and taking more. It's, uh, it just goes beyond me. Because one thing about Jeff Fennick, he will not let up. If he's got his man hurt, he will be there. Now Fennick's right on top here in this 12th round. And he's calling the shot. The American stepping very deeply into his, into his tracks now. And Fennick's pouring on the pressure. Working to the body and lifting the shots up to the side of the face. He's absolutely wading through uh, McGrory's defences. Absolutely, and of course this is 11th round and McGrory has never been this far, so the pressure is really must be telling on him. Unless he can keep his concentration... Ah, he turned his back, that's a sign he's tired. McGrory turned his back, and Fennick's the master here in round 12. Some of the fans calling out to Paul Moore to stop the fight, but McGrory still has a bit of a glint in the eye. And he's taking shots without answering. fight for both of these men. I'm sure Jeff Fennick will be glad when this fight's over because he has taken some very heavy shots from McCrory and McCrory has taken some very heavy shots as well. Fennick well on top in round 12. Both men right. are hanging on and leaning on each other, Jeffy, as you can see. Uh, yeah, the only way they can stay in there. Fennick is still pouring leather across the top, trying to get to uh, McCrory's face uh, line. There's a short right-hander, is a good punch. Guys around the back of the neck. Over goes the left and right from Fennick, but he's throwing leather at all times. The sheer strength is coming out. Jeff Fennick is just hitting this man. Low, that one, but still. Uh, the American doesn't look too well here. The right hand in close. Looking very weary, McGrory. And a grave doubt whether he'll see it out. Those body punches really taking toll of uh, the Olympic gold medalist. And this is very much looking like Olympic revenge. Now, Fennick in total control in this round. Come on, don't hold. Come on, get down, please. Ruffling his man up to the ropes. And McCrory doesn't have an answer. And if McCrory doesn't throw a punch soon, Ryan Moore will have to step it and stop this fight, but he does come back with two or three. Because if he doesn't throw a shot for 30 seconds, the referee has a right to stop the fight. Oh, he keeps coming back and throwing Very those. Very tired, McGrory, and those 
piston ring uh, shots pounding away to uh, McGrory's body, certainly sapping his energy. I'm sure both men will be looking forward to the end of this round because uh, this has been a very, very tough one. That's it. Cool. McGrory definitely worth the wear there. Um, Jeff Fennick obviously has won that round very clearly and distinctly, decisively. I just don't know why on earth Emmanuel Lewis is asking McGrory to stand there and take all them shots. It's just un it's beyond me. Well, looks certainly like it's going to be unlucky 13 for McCrory unless something amazing happens because he copped an absolute pounding well, in this that is round. It. I mean, this is incredible. And Jeff Fennick does not let up at all. And for him to take that kind of stick from a, a pressure fighter like Fennick, it's just beyond me. Well, he must be in remarkably uh, fit condition to, to withstood that when you come to look at it. Absolutely. Man, I mean, having McCrory, his first 15 rounder. And as you notice there, McCrory turned around there, unfortunately, the wrong way, so the referee could have actually stepped in and said, what you're doing? Um, but the pressure Fennick has put in on me was just tremendous. Well, Johnny Lewis is obviously very uh, calm and collective. He knows his man's got the fight won. The Jill has to be very careful with those right-handers. And here's, here's round 13. Round 13. And again, McGrory tried a good long right and it uh, scored. Fennick looks a lot fresher in the face. That slight nosebleed has been halted. And it's Fennick pinning his man up in the corner, pushing him onto the turn bucket of the ring, and McGrory tries to wrestle him out into the open spaces. Fennick moving from side to side, square stance coming up. Busy fists, the American dives underneath them, gets into a pinch. Well, as we can see here, Jeff, again, Jeff Fennig has put on a great, great performance. And here we are in round 13, and uh, Fennig is as fresh as, uh, as he was in round one. And it's a remarkable credit to this young man who is uh, who's a great champion in the IBF for Australia. Well, uh, McCrory seems to have been defending mainly in the last two or three sessions and just trying to stop uh, the punishment coming his way, but he's not offering much back in the retaliation. I think McCrory underestimated Jeff Fennick's uh, strength and aggression. I don't believe he knows where he's standing. They cut into the clear there, but there was it was a fairly ragged sort of a punch for McCrory. Fennick's too short, right slanted in close. Fennick tries the body with the right hand, goes up with the head again, working the gloves around uh, McCrory's waistline, and the referee looking very closely for any infringements. Well, the fans have certainly got their money's worth here, Jeff. Well, it's been uh, a very strong tempo fight. It's been fast paced, very hurtful punches, and uh, no man giving each other any quarter. Rory is being pinned up on those ropes again. Tries retaliating punches with the left hand. Fennick missed with an upcountry right-hander. Both men are actually right above us here. Jeff, I can feel those punches sinking into the body. Jeff, Jeff Fennick yes, is very really heavy. McCrory keeps coming back with those great left hooks and right yeah. But here's Fennick again with this combination. Now he's got uh, McCrory fighting back with a uh, body fusillade, but he's just sagging a bit in the legs, McCrory. And he's in a dangerous area there, with uh, Fennick able to call the tune and pin him up against the top strand of the rope. Turning his body once more, he's in trouble again, McGrory. I cannot believe, Jeff, where Fennick is getting all this energy from. It's the third time he's turned his body, they might stop this fight now. But he doesn't have an answer to uh, the Australian champion. To the Australian world champion, no answer to him at all. Uh, he's looking very ordinary here, McGrory, and I'll have to watch him very closely. Yeah, I think the referee's considering that he's... Now he goes down. That was a very good punch to the body that put him down. In fact, it buckled him. And it totally buckled him with that tremendous right hand to the body. I think we'll see it on our replay. McCrory looks really tired in this round, and he took a tremendous body shot, which actually buckled him. I've, I've never seen it done before. You watch Fennick pull back here. I hit him with a left hook, a right hook, left hook, right cross. It's just, I tell you, you see that right cross? Straight to the abdomen. It was a beautiful shot. Yeah, it took the wind out of his sails, and uh, he went down. I think he was winded, very badly winded. He's up very quickly onto that knee, and then uh, regained the uh, upright. But... Uh, Surprisingly, he gets back into the corner and he still looks right in the eyes. I thought there was a chance the referee could have stopped it. Um, 
Well, not really, Jeff, for a simple reason. Um, McCrory, although he got up very quickly, his eyes look very clear. I mean, they uh, are clear now, yes, but he, he seemed to be dazed at that stage of it. By the same token, uh, there was no count apply because the bell rang almost immediately when he regained his feet. McCrory's out again. But Fennick's working those piston-like gloves and again trying to pin uh, McCrory up on the ropes. Fennick again wrestling his McCrory, man over to the ropes, pushing him and then throwing a right hand. And McCrory trying to reel underneath them. But if he, catch, if he latches onto one of them, it, uh, it could be the end of the contest. He just keeps rolling away, trying to work his shoulders underneath the uh, top strand of the rope. Fennick is pounding away relentlessly. McCrory does, does not have an answer to those combinations and that flurry of punches that Fennick throws because every one of them is a hurtful punch that comes onto him. It's, uh, it's quite phenomenal what he's doing here tonight, Fennick. The sweat pouring out of both uh, fighters' bodies. And uh, McCrory is feebly trying to defend himself, but he's getting in close and staying in there, seeking refuge in the clinch. He's still being worked at by Fennick on the body. A lot of those hundreds of Fennings are going to the body a little bit low. And the fans uh, are calling out to uh, Paul Moore to stop the fight, but I don't think it's necessary for that at the moment. But he's still backpedalling and taking plenty of punishment, McCrory. No, I think McCrory is still... Uh, right, I'll get right, you he's almost all right. He's not, he's not pleased. But I think he's just worn out. He's worn out, yes. This is where the 15 rounds are starting to find him out. That might be the end of it, and Jeff Fennick is the winner. That was an impressive victory by Jeff Fennick, and I must give all credit to McCrory, but Jeff Fennick was the better man here tonight. He just outdone McCrory, period. A wonderful, wonderful fight. And Jeff Fennick has proven again and again that he was a great, a, a great champion. Great sportsmanship for his opponent off the floor. And, That's uh, right. Yes, I think so. As you can see here, Jeff, McCrory was totally outclassed in the last five rounds. And for Jeff Fennick to come over and pick him up and give him a, a lift of congratulations is, is just a typical sportsman. And it's nice to see Jeff Fennick now realising that he is a tremendous champion and he has to look upon himself that after the fight, you know, you don't have to be angry. The fight's all over now, and here he is. Tremendous victory. Here he is, he's still lifting the his hand. A Very little strong. cuddle from Johnny Lewis. And as you can see here, Jeff just is so elated because he's dreamt of this fight for so long. And here's Johnny calling him back. And Paul. <laughs> I'm sure Jeff is very happy. And he just doesn't know where to go to congratulate his fans. He's lifting up. I think he's lifting a little child. There you are, look at that. He's got a lovely little boy there with him. A lovely little kid. And there's Jeff hugging on to Johnny Lewis. And I believe Peter is trying to get a little interview with Jeff Fennick, the world champion, who just defended his title victoriously. And Peter is now, I believe, just getting on to him. Right around Australia, they're watching you, Jeff. They're congratulating you, apart from the 12,000 here. Were you surprised you were still standing there at the end? Very surprised. Olympic gold medalist and a great fighter. He beat all the professionals I saw. He's tough and he's a worthy gold medalist. You know, just happy I could bring him tonight. Thanks very much, Australia. Thanks to all my sponsors. Thanks everybody for supporting me. I love you all. You started off a bit slowly, Jeff, but you really came at him in the last uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. He hit you a bit in the 6. Did he hurt you? He hurt me. I'm a champion. I come back to the champion rounds. He hurt me. He definitely hurt me. There's no way I'm going down. I'm a champion. I'm a proud of Australia. I'm going to stay that way. What's the future? Well, I'll wait to see the trainer. I love the trainer. I'll do whatever he tells me. Jeff, congratulations. We'll let you go and taste the spoils of victory. Thanks very much, Australia. Definitely a great fight there, Jeff, and I'm sure the whole of Australia applauds this young man from, from Detroit, from the Bronx gym, where, where Tommy Hurd, one of the greatest worldweight champions ever, has come from. This young man has come here to win this world title. He didn't do it, but all the fans, and I'm sure the whole of Australia, will, will, will applaud this young man for doing such a great job. And uh, Jeff Fennick, of course, has been just fabulous. Tremendous courage to withstand that as long as he did, and uh, 
a great sportsman too. He was very popular with the young people when he fought in the gymnasium and the spas, and uh, he's given them a great show. One and all, whether you be a young schoolboy oh, or uh, an oh, older Jeff, I mean, I mean, here we are, look at this. I mean, the fans are actually looking at Jeff with his gold medal that he's not going to keep. That's not his gold medal, that is McCrory's. But McCrory was kind enough to let him show it off. He says, well, I didn't get that one, but I'm still the world champion. And back story. to Peter Will. Uh, pa back to Peter. Well, there it is, a fantastic encounter at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. I hope you've enjoyed the action. We certainly have. We'll see you next time. On behalf of a gallant winner, Jeff Fennick, a fantastic loser, the American Steve McCrory, and Joe Bugner and Jeff Marnie, Peter Wilkins wishing you a very good evening. Welcome.